Today in the news, we got Intel shaving off prices, a surprise Nintendo Direct, and I answer some of your questions. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before we start, I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Skillshare. As some of you might know, Skillshare is a place where you can learn tons of stuff about hundreds of different topics. But what you might not know is that I kind of like it. At first, I was a bit skeptical, but I started a two month free trial about two weeks ago when they reached out, and there's some really interesting stuff in there. I checked out Dan Mace's course on editing with live sound. Aaron Draplin's logo creation course so I can finally create some merch and even a mixing course on uh, Propeller Heads Reason. That's my personal software of choice for music. Anyways, Skillshare is offering a two month free trial if you use the link in the description down below. So hey, if you wanna learn something new or if you're interested in discovering new topics, check it out. By the way, Aaron Draplin's course is absolutely hilarious. Let's get into the news. Today, we start with Intel. The company is being attacked on all fronts by AMD and there's absolutely no cover. Epic has taken over the server game, Ryzen 3000 is making strides in the mainstream, and while Intel still has some advantages in the high-end desktop, AMD is just waiting for Threadripper to come in and finish the job. But at their latest press meeting, Intel unveiled some pretty interesting new slash old stuff. Let me explain. First is what we already know about, the 9900KS, 5 gigahertz on all cores. We now know for sure Sure that it is coming next month. That chip is in a weird place, honestly. A standard 9900K doesn't have any issues overclocking to 5 gigahertz on all cores. The only difference is that the 9900KS will presumably be able to do it at a lower voltage, possibly allowing for better overclocks starting there. The second thing they announced is for their HEDT platform. That's anything above 8 cores for Intel. The company is prepping Cascade Lake X for release next month, and for the first time, and presumably Presumably because of AMD, they're going to slash their prices hard. Now, Intel didn't explicitly say that they were reducing the prices, but we know that Cascade Lake is still based on Skylake, aka 14 nanometer plus plus, which means the performance improvements will be purely based on clock speeds and core counts. During the press event, Intel shared a slide showing that Cascade Lake X would be around twice the performance per dollar as their last gen. Since we know Intel still won't go higher than 18 cores with their new generation, that means the new chips will be around half the price of the last family. This is the first time Intel truly caves on its pricing. Had it not been for Threadripper 2's existence or for Threadripper 3 being around the corner, we'd probably see a refresh without any changes. Now, is that enough? Will slashing prices in half give Intel a chance? Well, maybe, but in the long run, it probably won't. If Intel were to slash its 18 core CPU price in half, AMD is likely to just normalize their pricing for better value. So so far, every time AMD saw competition move, they just beat them on value. It happened with Ryzen's first gen, it happened with Navi, and it's gonna happen again. That Intel charts also shows AMD's now one-year-old Threadripper 2 line, and we know damn well that the Zen 2 version is about to be released. Moving on, yesterday we had a surprise Nintendo Direct and boy was it good. We finally got Overwatch on the platform, which a lot of people have been asking for. We got a few more details on Luigi's Mansion 3. We got new games like Little Town Heroes and Kirby Clash. But as you guys know, the most interesting thing to me was Smash Bros Ultimate. Banjo-Kazooie released on the same day as the Direct and we got the next DLC characters revealed. It's an SNK character called Terry Bogard and I'm a little disappointed since the invitation passed right in front of my boy. My main character when I used to play Capcom versus SNK as a kid, Kyo Kusanagi. At least they had similar movesets in the uh, Capcom versus SNK game, so maybe he'll be an Echo character, I hope. One other thing that I'm super excited about is the expansion of the Nintendo Switch Online Retro Library, which now includes SNES games. There's 20 of them available today for the service, and you can also purchase a SNES wireless controller to go with it. It's pretty cheap. I mean, 30 bucks for a controller is pretty good. In NVIDIA news, the company just collaborated with a Square Enix studio to share a new tech demo for ray tracing. Luminous Studio is a game engine developed by Square Enix developers and its next-gen iteration allows for games to be rendered almost exclusively with ray tracing. Usually, ray tracing is only a small part of the equation, like with reflections, shadows, or global illumination, so rendering a full scene with it is quite a feat. Only thing is, that scene was captured on a 2080 Ti, so yeah, not very uh, efficient for the everyday gamer. 
Next up with Valve, it looks like we're finally going to get the Steam overhaul we've been promised. So far, all I saw were screenshots left and right of one or two sections of the app. Well, it seems like the full version will become available on the 17th as part of their beta program. So if you wanted to try it out, make sure you tick that box in your options. Don't get me wrong, I like the old UI, but sometimes you need some change and looking at the screenshots, it looks pretty good. Now you guys had some questions and it's time to answer them, so let's go. One of the questions that came up often was, what is in your rig? Well, nothing fancy actually. I have a first gen Ryzen 1700X with 32 gigabytes of 2400 megahertz RAM. For the GPU, I was happy with my GTX 1070 Ti, but Hardware Connects lent me their 2080 to try it out. My PC is absolutely filthy with all the renovations that I had to do at my place, so it had to filter out tons of stuff. It survived concrete, wood, and drywall dust and it's amazingly still alive and not choking. I can't clean it right now because of uh, because of a video we have planned for it but here is the dust filter. Absolutely gross. Intel or AMD? Look, it's a case-by-case -case scenario, but I have to say that in this generation, AMD wins my recommendation badge. Zen 2, especially the 3600X, 3700X, and 3900X are always better in terms of performance per dollar compared to Intel. The only problem I have with AMD is that often, it feels like we're left beta testing their products in the first few months. Kind of like what's been happening with video games. They release it, then the community finds a thousand bugs, and then we're left waiting for the fixes. Threadripper. I had two questions about that product. First, does it make sense for gaming, even for streamers? No, I don't think so. With Ryzen 3000 going all the way up to 16 cores, Threadripper should be kept for those use cases that require very high core count. 3D modeling, 3D rendering, virtualization, VFX work, and in some cases for editing. The other question is, do you think Threadripper will start at 16 cores? Sure, we saw some leaks a few weeks ago about it. Questions about the channel. What are your plans for the future of the channel? Well, I have to make four videos a week, so it's hard for me to find time, but I'd like to make longer form videos like reviews or DIYs, or even more in-depth videos on particular subjects. Oh, and you guys have been asking about a Discord channel. It's coming up. Am I planning any merch? I'd love to create some merch for the channel, but I'm still looking into the process. I just don't want you guys to pay a fortune for a crappy product, so stay tuned. Is Boot Sequence really a team or is it just me? It's a little bit of both. I make all the videos and take care of the channel and the rest of the team are here in case I need any help. Mike from Hardware Canucks is actually extremely knowledgeable and helps me out anytime I have a question. Personal questions. Do you miss your old Snows Tech channel? Sure I do. It allowed me to create pretty awesome stuff, but I'm thinking of turning it into a live stream channel where you guys can interact with me a few times a week. I don't want to do this on this channel because that could get annoying with all of the live stream notifications and it would just fill up the feed. I'll probably be converting my personal channel in the next few days. I'll let you guys know. Let's get some quick fire questions out of the way. Country, Morocco. Food, tacos maybe? Minecraft? Minecraft. Breaking Bad or Game of Thrones? Don't judge me, Breaking Bad. Favorite hot drink? None, gotta stay frosty. Pets? Got two, Pika and Xena. They're cute, aren't they? And that's all the time we have for questions. I mean, there were more, but I guess we're gonna have to make another video for that. Maybe make it a monthly thing. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions, you can leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. This is the longest video I've ever posted. And um, yeah, I feel like I'm dying right now.